Hi, I'm Dennis Phillips, and welcome to Everyday Reloading and Shooting. Handling firearms is dangerous, but there's more than one way to hurt yourself with a gun. This video is going to be a little bit different because I had a small accident at the range when I was shooting. My rifle kicked back and because of the way I was holding my rifle, I had the grip here and I was holding the squishy bag that raised and lowered the barrel or, or the sights on the target right here. And I had my hand in the way and when that barrel kicked back, the butt of the gun hit me right there on the top of my hand. And uh, that didn't happen, I don't think, until the last or next to the last, either the ninth or 10th round that I was shooting. I'll show it on the video here, but you'll see my regular shooting style here in this video, but it'll be broken up because I'm going to point out in scenes where there's no hematoma showing, it's perfectly flat, and then later there is a hematoma showing. I didn't notice it until I was driving home and I looked at my hand on the steering wheel. Man, that thing was huge, like in the video uh, that you'll see at the end. Uh, I kept a coal pack on it until bedtime and it went down. And so today's the next day and it's pretty flat by comparison. You'll see when you get to the video later on. Anyway, uh, that was my experience at the range Wednesday. So how are we going to develop our loads for this? Well. And some of my previous comparisons, in one test, I was shooting 40.3 grains of H4350. So these were all the same charge, and I shot groups. Well, this was a best four out of five. It was at a half inch. Here's one where I had a best four out of five at 0.45 inches. Here was one at 0.41 inches. 0.61 overall. Here's another with 0.56. So I'm definitely going to use that load. Then in another test, I had groups that shot 0.62 with the best 4 out of 5 at 0.50. This was probably the next best on this group. It um, had a overall size of 0.84. And although over here, here's one where the best 4 out of 5 was 0.42 inches. That was at 41 and a half grains of powder. But I will save some development for the heavier charges for another test. So for now, I believe what we're going to do is we're going to start right below this. Since this was 40.3 and did really well, we're going to start at 40.1, move to 40.3, and then go in two tenth grain increments to 40.5, 40.7, and 40.9. And then later I'll come back and I'll study those heavier charges. But this will be our loads for the next outing. Here's what we'll be loading. We have Alpha Munitions 6.5 Creedmoor Brass, brand new, never fired. We'll also be loading that with Sierra Match King's Boat Tail Hollow Point Bullets, 140 grains. We'll also be using Hornady's 140 grain ELD Match Bullet with the ballistic tip. We'll be using Federal AR Small Rifle Match Primers. And we'll be loading these with Hodgson's H4350 powder. We will have these loaded, 25 each, 25 Sierra, 25 Hornady. We'll have those loaded at 40.1 grains, 40.3, 40.5, 40.7, and 40.9. And we'll see how they do. I'm going to show you a little bit of the process here. The title of the video was something to do with reloading 6.5 Creedmoor, but we are going to be using brand new Alpha Brass 
that's never been fired. So technically this isn't reloading, this is actually loading. So the first step in loading the brass is going to be to prime it. And for that we'll be using the Federal AR Small Rifle Match Primers. The Frankfurt Arsenal handheld loading tool. Take out the tray. Remove the cover. These are usually a pain in the butt to open. Make sure you don't spill them. Insert the primers into the tray and release them. And usually these will right themselves and these have all but a couple. You probably can't see it on the tray but there's these little tiny pinpoints sticking up that kind of grab onto the primer and if you just touch it it'll roll it over if it's turned the wrong way. There's a little door here that I'll need to close to keep them from coming out like that. And then I reinsert the cover, like so, snap it into place, and that's ready for action. The priming tool, the last time I used this, I primed 223, so I'm going to have to remove the case holder for the 223. Now insert the case holder for the 6.5 Creedmoor. And they both use a small rifle primer. This does have equipment for working with large rifle primers or large pistol primers, but we don't need to do that. So insert the tray into the priming tool. So to make it easier to work with this brass, I'm gonna pour it out here on a towel here to make it a little easier to grab and pick up. Drop it like so. Okay. And most of those turn the right way. So now I'll open this little gate right here. And that allows the primers to drop into the feeding tube. Perfect. Okay. All right, so I've got 50 of these to do, so you don't have to watch this, but I'll take care of getting these loaded, and then we'll come back and we'll dispense some powder. The last time I used the powder dispenser, I was reloading 223, and that takes about half of the amount of powder that the 6.5 Creedmoor takes. So we're going to have to do a little adjusting to get this right. So I'm pouring the powder into the powder dispenser and that's not going to be enough for 50 rounds. But I just happen to have a little extra on hand here. So we'll go ahead and fill that almost all the way up. Set the container aside. I have a little jig here that I made for my camera and it fits, the camera fits right here and in order to get the scale level, well let's start out by zeroing it out. So you adjust the scale. You can't see this because of where I've had to set the camera, but you turn a little wheel here on the end of the scale and that adjusts the balance bar to zero. I don't know if you can see it on my phone, but that mark is right on zero. So then we want to load for 40.1 grains and each one of these little marks here is five grains. 
so that's 5, 10, 30, 35, 40. Okay, so that's on 40, and then on the little end, we'll go to point 0.1. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw a charge that's a little bit less than 40.1, and then we're going to use the powder trickler to bring it up to meet it. So I'm going to go ahead and dispense a few charges in here. And let's see if we're close. Didn't move the scale. Need to increase it. So we adjust it by turning this little knob to the right. Still didn't budget. Need more. And it runs a little measure in or out of the dispenser well. And if you run it out, it allows more power to enter powder. To, okay, we're overweight now. So we need to back it down a little. Okay, and this is slightly high. So I'm going to back off just a little. But I'm not going to waste this charge. I'm going to dump a little bit right here into the trickler. Weigh it again. And then we'll trickle a little bit of powder. It takes a minute for the tube to fill here. But I'm way. Here we go. Needle's starting to move. Bringing it up to where that mark is even. So there you are, 40.1. And all of these along this first row are going to be loaded at 40.1. Let's try and move the funnel so you don't accidentally recharge the same case twice otherwise you end up with a mess on your hands okay this one's charging pretty close to zero yep in fact it's almost on zero so that's where we would like to throw every one if we could okay so we bring it up to zero dump the charge move the funnel Sometimes you can feel it. This is a um, an extruded powder. I call it a stick powder. It's like loading firewood in some ways. And sometimes a little piece will get caught. This one is almost perfect. You need to drop just one or two grains. Because right, that one dispensed without any jerking. Oh, granules, I mean. And, and we're right on target. So each time you increase the load, you'll have to increase the charge just a little bit. Otherwise, you'll be having to use the trickler too much. So we're going to weigh all of these out. You see how it's done here. And then we'll come back and we'll seat the bullets. So using the Hornady comparator tool, I've determined that the Sierra Match King bullets from cartridge base to ogive is 2.3 inches with an overall length of 2.75 inches, which would actually give you 25 thousandths clearance off of the lens. So I've adjusted the seating die, and I'm seating the Sierra Match King bullets, and those will have an overall length at 2.75 inches.
have to zero it out. And there we are at 2.752. So that's close enough. So we're going to go ahead and load these. And then I will load the Hornady once these are complete. Two point seven five five. I'm going to tighten that just a little bit. Two point seven five zero. So we're going to go ahead and load the Sierras and then we'll come back to the Hornady. Okay, I have not measured the ELD match base to OJAV, but the book calls for a 2.80 overall length. So I believe we have this set correctly. Two point eight zero. So we're going to run with that. So once these are all seated, we'll be ready to load them up and take them to the range. As mentioned, we're comparing a Sierra Match King 140 grain bullet against Hornady's 140 grain ELD Match. I'm here at the range and I've got my Saco S20. We'll be shooting that at 100 yards. So let's test them and see how they do. Send it to 100 yards. You probably noticed that the targets were all numbered. I've got all of my loads in bags marked 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And these match the loads shown on the target, which you saw on the loading block here. So we're going to start off with target number 1. Seems like a good place to start. Put my ears on. So you're welcome to listen to the music and watch me shoot. Or you can fast forward to the end and see the results. I believe this is the shot where the gun injured my hand.
So there we have 10 groups of five. Let's bring it in, take a look, see how we did. Here's a brief video of the injury. Now for the results. Here you go. It was an interesting day at the range today. Not sure which, but around target number 9 or 10, I was holding the rifle in such a way that when it kicked back, the heel of the grip hit my left hand and caused a hematoma. It's pretty much back to normal now, but it's bruising a little bit. But you saw the pictures there. So anyway, it's time to measure these. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to press down on all of these bullet holes that have come through. I'm going to try to flatten them out because when we measure them, we're going to measure from one edge of the gray ring to the other. And these are the ones I just flattened down. You can see that gray ring. These have not been flattened down. The gray ring is not quite as defined. So pressing those down will help us get our measurement. All right. Okay, so we've got those all flattened out and we're ready to measure. It's interesting when you look at it from this side, from this perspective, you can tell a little bit more about the groups. Like you can tell that this one is scattered, for example, and this one is relatively tight. Same here, same here, pretty tight here. So let's turn them over, measure them, and see where we stand. So I'm going to start here, turn the caliper on, set to zero. I take one of the bullets that I was shooting today, and that's measuring 263 and a half. Zero that out. Now we measure. The reason you zero out the diameter of the bullet is because then when you measure from edge to edge minus the diameter of the bullet you're actually getting a measurement from center to center on that group so that's how you want to measure from the farthest edge to the farthest edge and I go right up to the edge of that gray line so that's 0.728 I'm going to round that to 0.73. And then I'm also going to measure the best 4 out of 5, which this is pretty easy to see. Point four nine. And then I'll average those two for a score. So I'm going to measure the rest of these just like that. So for those of you who watch my videos regularly, you know that when I measure a group size, I will measure the extreme spread of the furthest point of one bullet to the furthest uh, bullet away from center to center. And that's called an extreme spread. In this case, these are highlighted in pink. 
And then I also measure the best four out of five, which I've highlighted in blue. You average those two together, and that gives what I call a score for that round or for that target. So this was my cold bore shot. This was the first five shots out of the rifle for the day. The group was 1.31 inches overall, the best four out of five at 0.84, so fairly large group with a score of 1.08. Now the barrel was starting to get warmed up a little bit here when we shot the Hornady, and so we had an extreme spread here of 1.08, still a little wide, but a little bit better than Sierra, but also the barrel was starting to warm up here. Uh, and then we had a best four out of five of 0.74 with a score of 91. Now, when we went to 40.3 grains of powder, things started to improve. Of course, the barrel's warming up, but we had an extreme spread with the Sierra Match King of 0.88 inches and a best four out of five of 0.63. But the Hornady performed a little better with the extreme spread of 0.73 inches, the best four out of five grouping at 0.49. So that's a load to zero in on right there. That continued with the 40 and a half grains of powder. The Sierra Match King had an extreme spread of 0.95, but a best four out of five of 0.43. So a very tight group and very close to the aiming point there because at this point, I was aiming at the very bottom of the circle, trying to focus on the smallest area possible to try to center my shots, and those were very close. Same here with the Hornady. Uh, grouped almost, well, the scored, scored similarly. The extreme spread was 0.72 versus 0.95, so it grouped better overall, but the best four out of five were at 0.63, and again, very close to the point of aim with a score of 0.68. We go up to 40.7 grains, and we have mixed results here because we have the Sierra at 0.74 overall. Hornady, we had a flyer here. I'm sure that shooter error, 1.07 extreme spread with the best four out of five at 0.69. But look at the best four out of five over here, 0.54 with a score of 0.64 and here a score of 0.88. We get to 40.9 grains of powder. We have an extreme spread with Sierra of 0.86, best four out of five, 0.71, score of 79. With the Sierra Match King, this is the best four out of five of the day. We had a overall group size of 0.89 inches, but look at that best four out of five. Those four right there together, 0.37 inches, right there at the bottom of the bullseye where I was aiming to. So very pleased with that. If you take all of these uh, measurements and average those, then Sierra comes in with an average extreme spread of 0.97 inches. And of course, this first cold bore shot, I'm sure is what threw that off. But you take that out of there, and that group size is going to shrink a lot. So 0.97 overall on the Sierra Match King, but on the Hornady ELD Match, we had an average extreme spread of 0.90 inches. So that was almost a tenth of an inch lower than Sierra. On the best four out of five, we were pretty close. Sierra grouped 0.63 inches, and Hornady was 0.58 inches. So that's only five hundredths of an inch there. And then for an average score, when you average those scores together, Hornady, excuse me, Sierra was 0 0.80. Hornady was 0.74. So the winner here, we're going to say is Hornady. But Sierra was a very close second. Shot very well. Had some really excellent groups here. Very happy with some of these. So I'm probably going to try to do some more load development in this area right here between the 40.3 and 40.7. May, maybe go 40.3, 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0 0.7 and see how those shoot. 
All right. Well, look, thank you so much for watching. If you have comments, I would love to read those. I try to respond to all of those. Uh, and I really do appreciate your watching. So I will see you next time. Thank you.